It's not easy for us busy geotechnical engineers to keep up with industry trends while keeping up with our engineering work. Therefore, it's our goal at the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast to help you do just that. We strive to keep our listeners informed on important industry topics and also to educate you on interesting technical topics and trends in the geotechnical world. In this episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast, I'll be talking with Dr. Marwan Azalai, who is a senior geotechnical manager at the Dubai Development Authority. We'll be talking about the design of sustainable deep foundation systems in Dubai sedimentary rock. I'm your host, Jared Green, and I'm excited to be bringing you another episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. Before we dive in, we'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. Now let's dive into today's episode. All right. Welcome to the show, Dr. Marwan. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? Good. I'm good. So good to see you. It's been a long time, but good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, uh, 2010 when you visited uh, Dubai last time. And uh, uh, now it's almost 12 years. And, oh, my uh, goodness. <laughs> it's quite a long time. Yeah. So it's time to come back. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome anytime. And still, we are waiting for you to come back to, to United Arab Emirates to Dubai. Yeah. Definitely. We'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Well, we're glad to have you on the show. Would love it if you could tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and also what is it that you do on a daily basis? Yeah, exactly. So basically, my name is Marwan Al Zayla. I'm a geotech engineer or senior manager of geotechnical engineering in Dubai Development Authority. Um, basically, the Dubai Development Authority, it's a building authority responsible, has a responsibility to um, uh, give the appro approvals in, uh, in Dubai, in uh, the new projects here in Dubai. So basically, my work is uh, concentrating on uh, reviewing all the geotechnical works uh, related to foundations, assuring ground improvement, um, dewatering, uh, all this stuff, soil investigation or geotechnical investigation reports. Uh, so basically, this is exactly what I do. And my background, I finished my civil engineering from University of Sharjah, uh, the next uh, city, next city to Dubai, and as well, uh, my master from there. Then I moved to Germany and uh, did my PhD in Technical University uh, Darmstadt, which is very close to Frankfurt with the uh, a famous professor, uh, Rolf Katzenbach. Um, during that, we studied um, and we concentrate on the Dubai sedimentary rock and uh, we uh, try to design uh, the foundation and do a sustainable foundation. Everybody knows there in when you work in the weak rock, um, is, there is um, a kind of uh, conservative approach when you do that. Uh, and uh, what we call it in the sedimentary rock on the, or the weak rock. So basically from there, and I spent a few years there with uh, Professor Katzenbach until I completed my PhD in 2017, and then back uh, uh, to my work again in uh, Dubai Development Authority. Uh, I do uh, part-time teaching in Heriot Watt, uh, um, Dubai. Uh, I'm teaching ground engineering uh, in master's students an advanced foundation as well in Abu Dhabi University in the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So you have your hands full. Lots going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a lot. I don't know how you do all that, but that's awesome. <laughs> uh, I mean, the good things in teaching, it's not uh, you, you, the master classes will be all the time in the evening classes and sometime in the weekend. So it is once a week. So uh, I could manage to do a few things like that. Uh, in addition of that, as you know, uh, when we invited you long back in 2010, uh, at the establishment of uh, uh, DFID Foundation Institute in Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, 
where you attended the conference over there. Still, we have a lot of activities there and I'm part of the committee and we are trying to do a few activities related to the geotechnical engineering uh, industry uh, in Dubai. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. All right, so let's see. So for more our listeners that may not be familiar with deep foundation systems, can you explain what is a deep foundation system? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Okay, uh, to be honest, you know, um, uh, the foundation, um, which I want to explain it here, I'm talking about basically about the pile or the pile raft, where we have deep foundation. Usually we, we turn uh, or we use the deep foundation while we have, uh, um, um, we call it huge loads coming from the structures and we have to change the foundation system. So the ground, you cannot go with the normal uh, techniques like shell foundation, like raft or spread footing or those ones. So you have to move, you have to change your design to, um, uh, to, uh, to the foundation. And as you know, there in Dubai or in the United Emirates, we have a lot of high rise buildings, uh, especially Burj Khalifa, uh, the highest in the world. And uh, for that, for sure, you cannot use the normal foundation uh, system and you have to go for the deep foundation. So the deep foundation, it will be it will contain the raft plus the uh, piles or the deep piles, yeah. Okay, and what type of deep foundation systems do you typically work with? Uh, basically, uh, we, we, the, the, the main one here used in Dubai for sure, the piles, it's widely, widely used here. And uh, usually the depth of, or the length of these piles varies between say 50 meters to 60 sometime. 70 so uh, uh so this is the main uh deep foundation used here in the united arab emirates yeah okay and what type of diameters are you typically seeing well the diameter sometimes we reach up to 1.5 uh diameter and uh, mm -hmm. 1.2 so we have quite huge diameters mm -hmm. and uh, uh that's why it's really uh the a, a foundation has an important role uh, for the building, as everybody knows, as well as as a cost. So we have to optimize and do the value and engineering on that part and try to uh, optimize our design and make it more uh, economical uh, for these high rise buildings here in in the United Arab Emirates or in Dubai. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Oh, you say yeah. optimize the design. Are you doing a lot of um, bi directional testing? Um, I, I almost, yeah. almost said O-cell testing, but bi-directional testing, you find yourself doing a lot of those on the, on the larger shafts? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will talk about the, exactly the research, what we did. Actually, we have an important uh, area in Dubai. We call it the Business Bay and downtown where, where uh, Burj Khalifa are okay, located. Mm -hmm. And there we have around, uh, we did the study uh, of uh, 30 maybe plots, which almost like 50 towers. Uh, we had a static load test for uh, uh, 116 piles and uh, plus a few also test and instrumented test. Mm -hmm. uh, all these piles we, uh, we uh, model it in um, geotechnical finite element software axis and we back calculate the stiffness and strength of uh, Dubai sedimentary rock. Mm -hmm. So basically based on those uh, huge study, uh, we, we model all these piles and we try to fit the curve, which related to um, uh, the curve uh, from uh, the static load test and the back calculated uh, curve. And we keep changing the E value until we reach it. Uh, based on this research, after we did that, the minimum changes in, in E value calculated based on the uh, new uh, empirical approach was maybe 20 times. So we did a lot of, yeah, we did a lot of saving uh, uh, based on that uh, research. And uh, basically that's why people, they are underestimating uh, the strength and uh, the stiffness of the, of the sedimentary rock here in Dubai. Uh, from uh, basically the discussion happened between me and Professor Katzenbach, we due to the oversizing of, of, of those files. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the time when we do the static load test, the calculated settlement, based on the empirical approach was quite much less where we did the test. And for example, if you did the, the test and you have to get, for example, 15 millimeter settlement, you get to three or five millimeters. Wow. So that mean, yeah, that mean we are underestimating uh, those kind of those parameters. 
And when we did this back calculation, and we studied this, the OCL test, instrumented test, all this, we found that we are really underestimating uh, the, those properties. And uh, based on that, we are uh, doing a lot of uh, optimization now. Uh, uh, I think also my colleagues, uh, uh, Benoit, uh, he's, uh, he's, I think, uh, vice president in WSB Canada. He did a very good research on that. Uh, Enrique Omram Motara from WSB UAE. They did also some researches. Many geotechnical engineers now touching that part and trying to uh, do a lot of optimization uh, uh, and try to make the, more the geotechnical engineering more, um, I mean, more, uh, more green construction, let it go this way. Try to push to the more green construction and sustainable uh, foundation systems. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, the reality is that, you know, the, the more empirical data we, we're, 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 we're creating or, or capturing, the better it is for the next person that's going to design there or construct there. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and what are some of the design considerations for a good foundation? I mean, you touched on some of those, but what are some of the design considerations? Well, my opinion, uh, it's very important role for the geotechnical engineer to convince um, consultants, developers to invest in their geotechnical investigation report. Mm. Uh, the problem is maybe, um, the problems in my opinion from the geotechnical engineers, uh, they have to explain when we do a proper geotechnical investigation, when we do a lot of institute tests, when we do pressure meter, when we do the lat meter, when we do all these type of tests, uh, geophysical tests, we for sure we will get very good parameter and we will design our foundation uh, properly. So the problem is, is I think uh, previously people, they don't give any importance to the geotechnical investigation test, trying to minimize the cost or minimize the test as much as they can. But nowadays people, they understand uh, the importance of that and how that will lead to uh, uh, to optimize the foundation or the deep foundation design. Yeah. Okay. And what do you say are some advantages for deep foundations? I, I know in some geologies, you have to go for a deep foundation, but what are some yeah. of the advantages that come to mind? Uh, my opinion, one of the advantages, uh, you give a lot of uh, uh, room to, to the structure engineer uh, or the architecture engineer with their designs. Mm -hmm. um, if we stuck with the uh, with, for example, the raft foundation or the cell foundation, we will never build uh, Burj Khalifa, uh, for example, in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, we will not do the palm. We will not do a lot of uh, really amazing buildings, which we have it here in the Middle East, especially in the United Arab Emirates or in Dubai. So uh, I think the solutions provided by the geotechnical engineers, because the foundation is the foundation, foundation of everything. So when you give the solution in the foundation, for sure, you, you will have a huge impact in your how your city will look, how your projects will change, how you could do economical projects as well, because you are increasing the number of flats, you are increasing the number of floors due to that. So uh, I think uh, really the Deep Foundation solved a lot of problem um, and uh, moved really the height of the buildings to what we can see now in many buildings like the Kingdom Tower in Saudi Arabia or Burj Khalifa in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. There's just, there's no way it would be possible without a deep foundation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it just wouldn't be possible. The whole gravity thing, you know, it just wouldn't be possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Without your technical engineer, it would never be possible. It would never be yeah. possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And what are some of the challenges that you've experienced when you're designing uh, in Dubai uh, sedimentary rock? <sighs> Yeah, there is a lot of challenges to be honest, because you know when you go for the normal uh, techniques, in my opinion, uh, when you do UCS test and you get those all information related to UCS, RQD, all this stuff, which you rely on it to calculate, for example, the E, the uh, model of elasticity of rock or the cohesion or whatever geotechnical parameters. Now the problem of relying on that, uh, you will find. Uh, it's giving you really uh, you a lot of uh, uh, low parameters or uh, quite less parameters as compared to when you do a proper testing or bar calculation. Mm -hmm. So you'll find a lot of fracture. You will find a lot of uh, lower value of UCS 1, 1.52. Uh, many people, you know, they get uh, 
confused, maybe they will consider it as cemented sand or a kind of uh, uh, cemented sand or uh, sand. So that's why, or very dense sand. That's why I think this is very challenging to convince as well uh, the other designers uh, uh, related to your idea. So basically, uh, this is one of the uh, important things. And also, I think all the geotechnical investigation in this material should be done carefully because of the, uh, the nature of this uh, material. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I know in, uh, I believe it was in 2015, you started teaching as a part-time lecturer at uh, Herat Wat University in yeah. Dubai and also in Abu Dhabi University. What's that yeah. been like for you and how did it benefit your career? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, one of the challenging things which we have it here in the Middle East, uh, especially in the, in the United Arab Emirates, uh, how you connect between the industry and the university. I know Gerard in the United States, I think um, the university and industry, they work very nicely together and they do a lot of projects, a lot of research together. Now, the point is how we can uh, create and bridge this link between both of them. Uh, that's why I was uh, so interested to, uh, to, uh, to teach and the uh, opportunity was given by Heriot Watt uh, University uh, Dubai branch because they have two branches, one of them in Scotland and one in Malaysia. So uh, I start teaching and I start teaching even the undergraduate student. I start with uh, um, geotechnical engineering, soil mechanics, civil engineering projects, uh, soil and geology, geology and soil properties. So I start with those ones and really to add to me a lot of things. Even uh, personally, I learned a lot of things during my teaching those students. Mm -hmm. And after that, I moved to teach the postgraduate and I'm teaching about uh, engineering. And I'm also supervising those students in their dissertation. So what I'm basically what I'm trying in, in, in the universities, how we can link, how we can uh, give them real data from real projects to do their research on that, to do a lot of improvement in our um, techniques, which we use it in the industry. Um, so happy. I mean, I did a few researches with a lot of uh, students here and really improved me in my technical work and, my, uh, and as well as uh, give them a lot of information about the industry. So uh, this is what I did in Heriot Watt. And recently I started with Abu Dhabi University as well in postgraduate with Advanced Foundation. And uh, we did a lot of, uh, even though research is with the student there and we are publishing few papers which all the uh, those papers uh, uh, bridging the links between the academia and the industry uh, it's so important especially as geotechs it, it's so important that that academia is is talking with industry because you know you want to make sure that it you know that what you're learning theoretically is able to be applied practically so that's that's really good that you're doing that yeah sure and uh, i think uh, uh, the industry should trust more the universities and try to rely on them, uh, especially in the part of research and development. And I believe uh, in, in Dubai or United Arab Emirates, slowly, slowly, uh, uh, this gap uh, uh, is, is becoming uh, smaller and smaller. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, before I take our break, what final piece of advice would you like to give some of the listeners that are uh, kind of younger in their careers or in their studies? Ah, yes, um, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, in this part, uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, for the uh, for new engineer or young engineers, um, uh, try all the time to, uh, to go to the site, try to connect between the design work and the site work, try to get more information related to that. Uh, also focus in your improving yourself by doing your master's, your PhD, improving yourself, do your studies, do a lot of courses, uh, try to use the new methodologies in, for example, FEM, geotechnical, finite elements, discrete elements, all this stuff. Because as you know, in geotechnical engineering, uh, there is a lot of uh, research is happening and you have a lot of area. You could uh, ha improve it a lot, uh, this area. So I, I, I also support that. Uh, yeah, the company should give also a lot of time for these young engineers to uh, learn, to do a lot of courses, to do their postgraduate studies. And uh, for sure, this investment in these young engineers will have uh, really great impact in their companies as well. 
Thank you so much. I agree. The, the reality is that there, there's so much that you can learn. And if you're an organization that, that's supporting that and encouraging that, it's only it's only going to improve for everybody. So that's good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, great. Well, we're going to come back in just a minute and close this one out with Dr. Marwan in our Career Factor Safety In segment. Stick around. Before we go on here, I'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, Tensar International. Here's a message from Tensar about their award-winning software, Tensar Plus, which is available to you at no cost. Check out Tensar Plus. The award-winning design software for construction professionals to design with geosynthetics and calculate their value on projects. Tensar Plus is simple to use with a powerful engineering system at its core. It leverages our decades of research and experience with soils all over the world, so you can count on your solutions working the first time, even in the most difficult conditions. Whether you're designing a crane pad or need to build a temporary road over muck, the cost, time, and carbon savings can be calculated, making comparison with alternatives simple. Specs, reports, and product data can be generated for your design, and Training resources, research, and our third-party expert reviews are all provided conveniently in the software if needed. Usable both online and offline, the app is available in browser and on all major mobile platforms. Whatever you're working on, Tensar Plus is your toolbox for success. All right, welcome back. It's time for our Career Factor of Safety End segment. In geotechnical engineering, just like many disciplines of engineering, it's important to incorporate a factor of safety into your design. But what about incorporating a factor of safety into your career? Today, of course, we're speaking with Dr. Marwan Alzadie, uh, Senior Geotechnical Manager at Dubai Development Authority. Dr. Marwan, you've already had a very successful career. And when you look back on your career, what's one thing you implement in your career to give yourself a factor of safety in your career? Yeah. Uh uh, it's really nice question, uh, Gerard. Uh, I, I advise really all the people to go in uh, doing different things. You know, mm -hmm. don't uh, stuck yourself in geotechnical engineering, for example, in designing or uh, in just sitting and do all this modeling in the, in the office. Try to do some activities related to the site. Try right? to connect between the uh, academia and uh, industry. So try to teach, to do some courses. Try to do some trainings related to softwares. This is for sure will give you the uh, different angles and different opportunities where you can keep uh, moving between different uh, uh, career. Uh, so this is my, my, my advice or my safety factor, which I did in my career. Excellent, well, thank you so much. So it's worked so well for you. Yeah. So I'm sure that others will, will appreciate that feedback. Thank you. <laughs> all yeah, right, well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show and for sharing all the great insights. Uh, we have some really good information and advice that's going to be helpful to our listeners. Now, if somebody's listening in or watching and they wanted to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to reach you? You have an email you want to share or are you on social media? Yeah, yeah I'm in LinkedIn available as well as uh, my email is marwan.alzaila at gmail.com. And uh, they can contact me. And if they have any uh, questions in geotechnical engineering or especially in Dubai sedimentary rock or the foundation, I'm available and I could uh, uh, help them on that or uh, cooperate with them related to that. And uh, this is my contact details. One of the important things which I want to add it at the end, uh, Gerard and your, uh, your team, really you add a lot to the geotechnical engineering industry. Uh, my opinion, this kind of uh, um, uh, interviews or uh, uh, those, uh, we call it social media activities, very important. Uh, create uh, a lot of relations and a lot of links between the geotechnical engineers all over the world. So really, I would like to thank you and uh, thank your team for that. And uh, I uh, really thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. And uh, keep up yeah, the great work. You. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll wait for you for sure uh, to visit again Dubai uh, after uh, 12 or 13 years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. 
please feel free to go to geotechnicalengineeringpodcast.com where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, that being episode 55, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, we wish you the very best in all your geotechnical engineering endeavors. Peace.